Hi guys, welcome to another video. So I produced a IBCS waterfall PNL International Business Communication Standards, a uh, waterfall PNL a little while ago, and I had a few people ask me how to produce a chart like that. So in this video, I'm gonna demo how. So stay tuned. So I'm starting off here in Power Query and I have the uh, table that contains the PL data. So I have a few items. Uh, I've categorized the item, so it's either profit, it's a loss account, or it's some kind of subtotal. And then I have the actual amounts, the values. Now what we need to include here is a sorting order. So the way to do that, an easy way to do that is just to include a uh, index column. Start this off from one. And let's call this indeed sort order. Okay. There we go. So now we're, this is all we need to do here in Power Query. So we're just going to load this data into Power BI. So the actual trick to this here chart is that it is actually a stack bar chart. So all of these uh, bars actually are two bars. And what I managed to do obviously is I just hit the bar on the left hand side. So there's actually all sorts of bars here that I hit. So we have to make sure we turn this into a stacked chart. So for every item for maintenance, we need a second record, which contains the value for the hidden bar. The same goes for purchases. Of course, we need a value that contains the, uh, uh, we need a, a record that contains the value for the hidden bar. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. So in order to achieve a, uh, to obtain a second uh, a row for every item, we're just going to take a copy of, the, we're just going to take a copy of this table. So I'm going to go ahead and enter new table. And so this is going to be my PNL data for the uh, hidden, for the hidden bars. So let's start off by just making sure we obtain the table here. It's easier if it's here in, in, uh, in our view. So now we want to add a column to this table. So we take this table and um, so the name of the column bar, well, this should be our empty bar. Right. And so it's a little different whether the category is P, L or S. So we want to use a switch formula in order to, uh, to uh, uh, provide some different logic uh, for every different category. So if the category equals a P, so then what we want to do, uh, then what we want to do, so we want to play around with the filters a little bit. So we need that calculate formula. We just want to take the sum of the values, the sum of the values columns. But now we want to say, well, the category should definitely be AP. Uh, we don't want to filter on anything but the category. So we take the filters off, off of everything but the category column. Well, let's see what we have now before moving on. We're not there yet, but uh, so now we have a, hundred, a value of 100 both. So we filter this down to just P, right? And then we take the sum of these two values. But now I also wanna make sure that I only get values preceding the one in the current row. So in order to do that, what we're gonna say is, well, just give me the sort order. Sort order should be equal to or before, uh, just equal to before the earlier. So you want to compare the, the, the record in the current row to all of the, 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 the values in that same column. Okay. So we take that sort order again. And now let's see what we get. So here, for that, here we do not have a blank bar, but that is okay, right? Because consulting here, we don't want to have that precede by any blank bar. But now the maintenance actually, which is 60, right? But it gets preceded by a blank bar of 40. So this here bar. All right, so that's that's. Uh, but we can just take this code now for the uh, for the for the profit category and copy paste that and use that as a basis for our loss category because it's not all that different. Um, so here we want to take the uh, smaller than or equal to. 
so let, let's see what we uh, what we end up with so here see now it's going to just add these numbers right so 30 plus 20 plus 10 60 plus 10 is 70 plus 10 is 8 so it is going to add these numbers but what we actually want to do is we want to start off by the uh, total revenue and deduct this here number so we have to need, so we need the total revenue multiple times so what we're going to do we add that into a variable so total revenue equals so that would be the calculate of the sum of that value column value column this time however we want to make sure that the item is equal to total revenue so we want to be able to use that so we specify a return and then here in the value in the calculation here we say total revenue so we actually want to use this here total revenue minus all of this now let's see what this is going to give us here we go so we the empty bar of 70 so we start off by a bar empty bar of 70 and then we get that 30 for purchases right so that is exactly what we need. And then here we want the empty bar of 50, and here we want the empty bar of 40, which is given here. So then last but certainly not least, we also want to obtain a uh, the values for the uh, sub accounts, which is rather similar actually. So if it is an S, so this should also be the, the all the preceding else. Right. Now we don't want. Yeah, we do, we do want to take the total revenue. So let's enter this, and then see what we end up with. So I, I, for the uh, operating expenses, well, we start off by a bar of forty, uh, which is what we need, and then for the financial expenses, we start off by a bar of twenty. So this is the setup. Next, we also need to specify that. All of the records here actually contain that uh, that that hidden uh, hidden uh, column. So what we're going to say, right? Is this a is it visible? And that should simply always be false. So we include that column here now. And but we don't need all columns. So what we're going to say, well, select a few columns out of all of this table. So I'm going to go down all the way. And just give me the, the actual item it should be the item right give me the uh, value so now this is the table that we uh, that we need this is the helper table then we're going to continue and work on a uh, on, on the first table because we we, ne we need to make sure that the first table the first table only also holds these columns so what we're actually going to do is is add a new table and we're going to call this table the uh, the visible uh, the visible bars, pnl underscore visible uh, data visible. So you just want to select a few columns from the pnl data, right? And then so we want to take the item, which should actually be. And uh, that should always be true. So there we go. So now we want to union these two tables, which I'm actually going to do by simply adding a new table to this uh, to this model here. So we're going to say, well, this should be our IBC as uh, PML data. So that is the union of the hidden values values and the visible values right so I just union these two tables and there we go so now let's start using this here so I'll take this to the uh, uh, report page here we go let's make this a bit a little bit bigger I'm going to take this data use the items as rows make sure that we sort this correctly by the sort order So then we uh, include the values and say whether it's visible or not. And then we already have this setup. So I'd be able to already here in a standard Power BI chart 
set this up this way so let's drag the visible to the legend there we go and so now if I want to remove the light, blue, light blue bars then we could be able to so this is already kind of a setup right but we want to use a Triticulator because Triticulator offers for more uh, possibilities uh, when it comes to uh, doing the colors, but also for including additional uh, additional information to the right of this chart, uh, showing the deviation from a previous year percentage-wise or uh, all sorts of other uh, uh, information that we can bring across using Triticulator, which, ca which cannot be done here in a, a standard chart. So we're going to go ahead, I think I already have Triticulator up here, nope, so we're going to go ahead and download it. Which I just did, so we have it, so I'm going to turn this visual now into a Triticulator visual, make sure that I add all of the items here. Here it goes, I'm going to edit the chart. So now how to do a stacked uh, column chart here, right? So what we're going to do, well, we need the items here on our y-axis. Make sure that we sort it the proper way. Now since there's two, two values for every item, it is already going to be a uh, stack chart, right? So I add this here. Let me just take it like so. See now I get two items because it's there's two items for there's two values for every item right there's two records containing a value for every item here so let's take the values as our width uh, uh, close this gap here and make sure that we set the visibility here based off of this so now we have the uh, the same uh, the same chart actually right this is how uh, how, I, how I came to this uh, to this to this uh, to this chart the only thing that I still need to include here are the colors so let's add a new measure so colors equal so if the selected value right, of the uh, item uh, yeah, if that is in a list of values, so if that is in uh, total revenue, and uh, operating income, operating income, I'm just going to skip the last two ones for now, because you'll get the idea, operating income, okay. if that's the case, then I want you to be black. If not, I want you to be great. Something seems to be off here. Result if true. Oh. It's kind of M. <laughs> Do it this way. Black or not. Great. So we take these colors now. So we need to add that here to the, to the visual. It's got mixed up a little bit. Let's reset this. There we go. So we take any uh, item here on the glyph and say this the fill should be according to the colors that we just produced. There you go. And so I only did total revenue and operating income, but you get the idea. So this is how. Thanks for watching.